have real fire. Dude, I need you. Go, go, go. This is crazy. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Have you ever wondered how you might react if you're a police officer in some of the situations that they face day to day? Well, wonder no more because we're going to find that out today on Switch. This is where civilians take on the shoes of police officers and have to make those critical decisions when life is on the line. Let's go. Switch. They going to our head of day, yeah. I read a lot, I do my research, I have a lot of buddies that's police officers, and I see a lot of police brutality on social media, on TV, and sometimes I have mixed feelings. The guys I know that are police officers, they are great people, some of my best friends. Ryan, you're my college um, yes, sir. teammate, <laughs> you know, at UNLV, and I can't say F the police or anything like that because I have friends, good friends, and family like brothers to me who are cops, so I'll never be able to say that but I don't agree with the police brutality. And I'm one who sits back and look at both sides. And today, this is, um, this will probably fill the void of being on the other side. So uh, last question, what are you hoping to get out of today, if anything? Just your perspective, the cop's perspective, being in your shoes, and that's it. We need you to respond to the gym. Uh, at the, the gym garage in reference to a choking baby. The reporting party said that his young baby was choking and he needs officers help immediately. Copy. Drop your, drop your weapon. Drop your weapon. Put your hands behind your back. Don't try nothing funny. Carry over, carry over. We need you to respond to the garage of the gym in reference to a choking baby break. The uh, caller said that there's a choking baby inside the garage and he needs your help immediately. Roger that. See his right hand. Can you come out where I can see you? I need you to. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I'm jammed. Wait, man, tell me how you feel, bro. I got a call that a baby was choking. And you know, I'm about to take off my vest and I don't need this. But some told me to keep it on. And I come to a call, I'm thinking I'm about to make a rescue. And hey, shots fired, I'm shot. Next thing you know, know, I'm shot. That's crazy, I didn't expect that at all. Did you get hit at all? I, yeah, I got hit in the chest. So you did take one? Unsure how to react initially, but I felt I felt good. You know, I think I observed the situation pretty well. When he came out and was hurrying me over, come, 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 I noticed his left hand um, was stuck to his hip. So immediately my mind is already going. Um, I don't think I reacted fast enough. I should have came in once I observed what I observed with his hand. 
I think I should have came in maybe with my hand on my gun or my hand or my gun drawn. Overall. And you got you got hit with a round, right? Oh yeah. For sure. So in real life, most likely you're gonna get shot in that situation. Right, yeah. Your guard's down is what we're hoping, right? Yeah. As a, as a bad guy, it's for you to put your guard down thinking it's just a baby choke. Mm -hmm. And then boom, you get hit. Right. So I think you played it really well. Yeah. You were kind of like, hey, come out, let me see your hands. Right. Yeah, you slow played it, which surprised me. You slow played me, you didn't get lowered in. If, if I do live through this, I got shot. I'm a different officer now. You know, my guard is up, I'm coming. Me personally, I'm almost coming gun drawn. Mm. You know, because I can't afford for that to happen again. I barely lived through this shot. That's, you know, what's interesting about that is, so you say you're a different officer after that. Officers, the way we train, man, we see scenarios like this, we run scenarios, so we know that there's a possibility. Yeah. So that kind of changes our mindset. Right. That's why you'll see officers come out with a gun, or they live through experiences. Right. Because they don't even want to be behind the eight ball. You were automatically behind the eight ball. You played football like I did. Yeah. As a receiver, you always knew where you were going. Mm -hmm. As a DB, I didn't know where I was going. Right. So we already playing at a disadvantage. Well, that's kind of how it is for officers. They're playing at a disadvantage a lot of times. When I entered the space, I felt like I needed to be hyper vigilant, uh, especially when I saw him waving at me to like get my attention to come. Uh, just in my experience, that kind of felt like it was almost a setup. Someone was trying to lure me into something. Mm. So I knew when I entered the space, I wanted to sort of just come this way and give myself a little more space. Right. And usually, and this was a rare occurrence, yeah. usually it is a baby not breathing. Yeah. So let me throw out this perspective. Let's just say there was a baby not breathing and somebody sees an officer walking casually and calm as their baby's not breathing. I, what, what's the perception of that gonna be like, my baby's not breathing and yet you're walking super slow. So you know what's interesting about this is, you know, a lot of people always say training, 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 officers need more training. Mm. We can get all the training we want, but what's different with all the officers is the way we think. Mm. Like we can't duplicate the way Donnell thinks. I can't duplicate the way Kenyon thinks. I can't duplicate what Seth thinks. We had three role players that just went. We had one officer that walked in because his mindset was he felt like he was being lured into something. You said, man, I was ready to get rid of my vest and everything because I heard a baby not breathing. And then you, you were paying attention to, you know, not even really the call, but more so what he was doing. So as much training and officers, training is so good for officers because it helps us, especially when we do a stress inoculation like this. So that way we can, you know, try to perform when that situation happens. But at the end of the day, we can't duplicate our minds and how people think. And so here's a big reveal. That scenario actually happened in Phoenix, Arizona. So the suspect called the police said the baby was choking. The officer, he's like, hey, come on officer, he, she's in here, she's in here. She runs up and as soon as she, or as soon as the officers run up, he pulls a gun out of the doorway and just shoots the officer mm. right, right then and there. Uh, he's able to get the officer for sure and you know, obviously he ends up going and barricading himself and then they end up, uh, he ends up losing his life later. As always, this episode was brought to you by the one and only 88 Tactical. Make sure you guys go on 88tactical.com to see what they're doing. But it was also brought to you by the one and only Bedros Cooley on himself. Thanks again for allowing us to utilize these great facilities. Switch. Take on